Hello everyone, Corey Mitchell with TradeThatSwing.com and this is your swing trading stock market outlook for the week of August 12th. We're also going to look a bit at Bitcoin. So each week I just go through the same process, deciding how I'm going to be deploying capital, if I'm going to be deploying capital, long, short. And heading into the week of August 12th, we have some mixed conditions. Uh, not really good. Um, not an ideal time to be buying. I'm mostly just going to be sitting on the sidelines and watching this play out. There are some watch lists that you can check out. There's also some longer term lists here. And those are listed because even though this is a swing trading article, once market conditions turn good, you know, if there's some of those longer term picks that you've been eyeing, that's a time to potentially pick them up. So I don't usually buy them when they're just plummeting. I'll buy them once they start recovering and once the indices start looking better because most stocks do move with the indices. So I look at several different indices to help give me an overview of the market. They're each looking at a little bit different segment of the market. And then I also have a Canadian index on here and Bitcoin. So the NASDAQ in correction, the S&P 500 in correction, the Russell 2000 in correction, the NYSE Composite in correction. And you can see they've had some pretty steep drops, taking out some prior swing lows. So, you know, if you're looking at a long term picture, you could still say, well, they're in an uptrend still overall. But uh, for swing trading, I prefer to see a little bit more strength come in before I start aggressively buying. So I can still consider these in correction on the short term. We need to see some higher swing highs, higher swing lows build uh, over here. Same with the Canadian index, pretty sharp sell off back to near a prior swing low. That's not showing strength. Uh, when you have strong moves up, you generally see you know small moves down. This was a pretty big one. And Bitcoin moving in this descending channel. I will sometimes trade channels. There's a couple different ways to trade them. If you have an overall uptrend, I will consider buying near the bottom of the channel. Uh, in this case, it's been very whipsaw -y. And so there's another way you can trade them is you can buy near the bottom of the channel. And I had uh, picked some up on some of these false breakouts that had happened before. Uh, there is another way you can trade them. Once you get the move back up into the channel, you can wait for the pullback, assuming it makes a higher swing low and stays inside the old channel and then starts turning back up. I do sometimes like that pattern as well. So we've had the move up into the old channel. If we get, you know, we've already started our little pullback here. So if we start rounding up higher again, that would maybe interest me. So we'll have to see how that plays out and also what's going on uh, with the market because Bitcoin, not perfectly correlated to the market, but generally if the market's selling off as it has been recently, you get the sell off in Bitcoin as well. Let's look at the market health indicators. They basically tell me how the overall market's doing kind of underneath the hood, maybe stuff we wouldn't necessarily see just by looking at uh, the price action of the indices. Volume not really important. This is an S&P 500 chart up at the top. This is daily average movement, or sorry, daily percentage movement of the S&P 500. And you can see during uptrends, volatility or daily movement is very low. That's indicative of, or that's just what happens during uptrends is you have low volatility. Once you start to see more correction-like behavior, bear market behavior, you'd get these much bigger daily movements. So you can see a shift here from really quiet as we just go up and to all of a sudden much more volatile even during this little decline you know drops were much smaller than they are now so this says you know big selling is coming in on some days and that's a warning sign this is the advanced decline line of the s p just advancing stocks minus declining stocks is a cumulative number and recently it's falling off a little bit with the S&P 500, so it's not really telling us much. What I like this one for is that it can give us some divergence if 
The S&P has been falling a little bit and this is holding it up really well. That usually indicates that the market's going to bounce or that it's actually kind of strong underneath the hood. Even though maybe a few stocks on the S within the S&P 500 were selling off, which maybe helped push the index down. Or uh, similarly, if the S&P 500 is going up and this is going down, that usually tells us that the S&P 500 is on borrowed time in terms of moving up and is more likely to correct because lots of stocks are moving lower. This is upside volume divided by total volume. I'm looking for very extreme values, this upper black line or this lower black line. And it needs to get there or either above it or below it. We have not had, we got close a couple times, but we haven't actually had any extreme readings on this. So it's a neutral. And this one, mixed. So we have the red, which is the S&P 500, and the turquoise, which is all US stocks. And this is the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average. So just a kind of crude measure of the number of stocks in uptrends. I generally find it much easier to make money when you have most stocks above their 50-day moving average. That means most of them are moving up. It's almost, uh, you know, you can not buy anything, but most things are moving up, so it's going to be easier to make money. When you have very few stocks above the 50-day moving average, it tends to be a tougher swing trading environment. And we're kind of mixed right here. We're hanging around the 50 line. All U.S. stocks, only 45%. S&P 500 stocks, 58 So it's a little mixed, so I'd say that's not great. I like to think of it in terms of capital deployment. If you're going to be 100% deployed when things are absolutely fantastic, you have to scale it back when they're not as fantastic. So you kind of make your own assessment of, you know, we don't have a lot of great looking things here, so your capital exposure should be low to fairly minimal, depending on how aggressive you want to be. I mean, you could still deploy a little bit if you want, but, you know, this, this isn't ideal. When it's good, that's when you're more aggressive. Uh, or maybe when things are ideal, you might use a bit of leverage. So you decide that kind of scale. How much do you want to scale it back when things are not good? Not really much going on in terms of the sectors. Nothing really great, like energy up a little bit, technology up a little bit. But these are not big numbers not really strong over the last month real estate up four and a half percent that's not really strong either um it's the strongest of the sectors out there but it's not you know really strong performance where you could just jump into stocks in that sector and likely make money uh, i like trading when it's easy money this is not a lot doing super well at the moment real estate over the last three months only up about nine percent you know that's pretty mediocre. Um, so yeah, nothing really standing out, uh, but real estate is seemingly the strongest, you know, not as kind of flat last week, but over the month and over the last three months, it's the strongest one. There's always the option you could dig into some industries, uh, Finviz, lots of other things, list the industries and you can look at if there's any that are performing strongly and you could potentially zero in on those to find some like you know tiny little pockets in the market that maybe are doing good or that are doing really bad to that uh, you could potentially short so i'm not really interested in the longs here i'm just going to hang out for a bit uh some shorts maybe a possibility again probably zeroing in on some industries that are maybe really weak stocks that are really weak because you know it's not we have one bearish kind of indicator here but the rest are neutral we have you know our, our neutral face if it's if it's bad i put a frowny face so we don't really have too many frowny faces it's you know so it's it's not super bearish yet it's not super bullish it's just kind of something where i want to minimize my exposure and see what happens wait for better opportunities so there's always the option to day trade as well if you're interested in that. Those tend to give more uh, trades each day, whereas swing trading is this kind of, you know, we have pockets of activity where it's we're kind of sitting and waiting for good conditions, then we're active, then we sit and wait, then we're active. So if you're more into constant action, I would check out 
the day trading. So that's your swing trading stock market outlook for the week of August 12th. Happy trading out there.